take over. Hey, Jamie, Steve, what's going on? Hey, Scott, Steve, how's it going over there on this fine Monday? Oh, just uh, same boat as you, just uh, trying to figure out why the IRS wants to hurt me so bad. <laughs> They're very mean people, Steve. But October 15th guys. is, you know, mm -hmm. that's going to be a rough one. October 15th deadline, whatever. Yeah, and I, hey, I just got mine delivered via email today, so when we're done here, I get to open mine up and either be horrified or, and, you know, jubilated, one of the two. Let's hope for the latter. Um, in any case, hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of The Office Hours. Today is October 12th. I'm your host, Jamie Hodge. I got Steve Gomez in here with me. So before we get rolling here, just want to take a moment to let all of you know that the information that we present in this webinar or any of the other webinars that we have coming at you on a weekly basis is for educational purposes only. So if you do need investment advice, like what to buy, when to buy it, when to sell it, all that good stuff, um, please do yourself a favor, seek out someone who's licensed to dispense such information like a registered investment advisor, Series 7 licensed stockbroker, um, plenty of uh, licensed individuals out there to help you with buy and sell and investment decisions. So once again, everything we share with you guys in these webinars is for educational purposes only. Moving right along here, always like to take a little bit of time at the top of the hour uh, for the new folks to let them know about the community that we built around the TI technology. And of course, up here in the left-hand corner, one of our best assets other than the tech itself is the trading room. And of course, we all know Mr. Barry Anderson moderates the room and Barry does a fantastic job at that. Uh, not only showcasing the way that he uses the technology, uh, but showcasing his trading style and is always more than willing to answer questions uh, if you're a new person in the trading room as well. So traders from all walks of life there from the very beginning to the seasoned pro. So uh, the other good thing about our trading room is the price of zero dollars and zero cents. So if you haven't been taking advantage of that resource, why not get in there and use it? course on Mondays, uh, the 5 p.m. webinar is office hours. You get myself and Steve. Steve takes the steering wheel on Tuesdays for the trade of the week. We bring in our CEO and founder, Mr. Dan Merkin, along with our chief technical, off technical officer, Brad Williams, uh, for the Wednesday hump day webinar. And then Andy's going to round out the 5 p.m. Eastern webinars with the trading studio, and I ride shotgun with him. And of course, we have our daily support webinar, every Monday through Friday, kicking off at 12 p.m. and lasting until 1 p.m. Eastern. A great place to come in and get any type of trade ideas question answered. And on the next slide here, you'll see how you can access that daily support session. Trade-ideas.com in the bottom left there, backslash live. It's always at the same address. So once you bookmark that URL, you're good to go. Same bat time, same bat channel, each and every day from 12 p.m. Eastern to 1 p.m. Eastern. Also, always like to give a little peek at how our user base has expanded. Of course, 2016 being the year that we added the first AI module, and you can see here just a steady increase, a little bit more of a bump than normal uh, in 2020 for obvious reasons. A lot more people flooding into the markets with the absence of sports and gambling and all that good stuff. And in addition to the increasing user base, we're seeing increased use of Brokerage Plus which is our add-on module currently compatible with interactive brokers. Uh, keeping our fingers crossed, we hope to have the Ameritrade version of Brokerage Plus ported and completed pretty soon here. Um, the cool thing about that is it'll be our first foray into the $0 uh, broker-dealer world. Everybody that uses IB knows they still charge a commission, and they were one of the first firms out there to announce commission-free trading, but that is on their light product, and you need the uh, Trader Workstation Pro version to use uh, Brokerage Plus. Uh, but nonetheless, even in that environment, you can see orange orders are the demo orders, blue orders are the live orders, and each and every month, we're adding more and more live orders to the count. You know, and people demo it first just to make sure they can find their footing, and then eventually, month on month, orange orders are converted into blue orders, and more new orange orders come in. So, People are digging the technology. Um, anybody that's used Brokerage Plus can vouch for that. So hopefully before too long, we're gonna have a $0 broker-dealer plugged in as well. Let's all keep our fingers crossed. And here we are at today's agenda. 
Um, got some cool stuff for you guys. Got the usual stuff, the Holly recap. Uh, of course, there's always some nice range breaks out there. Uh, but drummed up a little something uh, different today for you guys. We're going to talk about using anchored VWAP and how we can use that to zero in on what might be good buy levels or support levels or stop loss levels uh, for all these recent IPOs with limited, uh, you know, daily candles on the chart. So it should be interesting. So in keeping with tradition, I'm going to kick it on over to Steve here. He's going to talk about the major tracking ETFs and just the overall market action. And Steve, here it comes. Mm -hmm. And boy, oh, what an upside day. It kind of caught me a little off guard there. I don't know about you. Yeah, the strength caught me off guard too. And I, I just want to say I'm looking forward to your presentation on VWAP, Anchor VWAP. You probably, anybody that will have to leave early, you might want to come back and watch the recorded version for that. And it, and it, uh, it's interesting, huh, Jamie, how you come up with content for these webinars. I do the same thing. You know, when he was just going through Twitter last night and Jamie Boom tweet between myself and Brian Chen and then a little light bulb went off and Jamie said, let me show everybody how to use trade ideas with a really cool concept. And that's kind of the cool genesis of how the content comes around here. I like that. All right. Um, S&P 500 SPY ETF. In hindsight, it's always clear. And I will draw right there. In hindsight, looking back, looking left, the low of that day back there was a beautiful pivot point, as I've called out a few times, resistance and then support, support, three or four days of support there. So the trick is, is in the moment to try and find levels that look back. Anybody can do this in hindsight. You know, I can come back and show you this kind of stuff all day long. But in the moment, you know, when things are making new lows and you're looking left to try and find where is the next level of support. Um, I even had to remind myself that I got caught up and said, geez, we're between the two moving averages. And I completely forgot that we have pivot levels that we can focus on as well. So a bit of a, a learning in 2020 hindsight mode. But where we are now is literally um, the train has exploded from the station, didn't really give anybody much of a chance to catch up from that one little red bar. Can't even remember what that was about. Um, and honestly, Jamie, I can't even remember why we sold off in the first place. I think it was just technical. There really was no catalyst that this day came where we all pointed to and said the sky was falling. Unless I'm forgetting something, which I am, that's fine. Somebody can remind me. I cannot me. recall a specific macro event. Yeah. So it became a technical event, came down here in the washing machine between the 50 and the 20, and then we failed that. And I said, oh, shit, where are we going to go from here? And there it was. It was just that pivotal, pivotal point. And then the story became, all right, well, we've got some work to do. We've got to chew through these armpits and through these moving averages. And well, here we are, guys, in the cleanest of clean air. There's no mask on this chart. This is breathing clean air right here. But um, that's great if you've been positioned. And I will say, I'm got to be, I'm honestly, I'm a bit disappointed. You know, I don't know how some of Jamie's positions have gone, but, you know, I've talked to a few of my friends today and um, yeah, the spiders were up and a lot of things were up. But so a lot of the stuff in my swing account uh, not necessarily um, was up as well. So, you know, it's just weird how that kind of stuff um, shows up in this chart. And what I mean is, well, let's just all face it Apple, Amazon. Oog, Netflix. These are the ones that are driving the NASDAQ and the queues out. But I want to get back to the point of where we are. If you're somebody who just started taking on some swing trades today, you know, it might not be uh, what you're looking for because as I look at this chart, all that really occurs to me is, um, again, we've gotten ahead of ourselves. And when we get two or three days ahead of ourselves and you start to see this much airspace between the price and the rising 10 period moving average, that's a lot of airspace right there. If you're buying up here, it's the musical chairs game and you are probably not gonna find a seat when the music stops. So all I'm seeing is, I'm seeing a rendezvous, to use a French word, you know, somewhere in the future in this spot as the moving average comes up to meet and the price consolidates. You know, I don't see a lot going on right here. I see an extended move, which we've learned that, okay, we're not in a bad, the correction was short-lived. We're not going to have to worry about prices rolling over and selling off. We just have to worry about being in the right stuff. And I don't necessarily think I was in the right stuff today because I'm not in the giant Apples and Amazons and Googles and Netflix and Teslas. But that's what's driving the market higher. So just be aware. I think we're the good news is we're in fresh, clean air. Like I said, the bad news is look what happened back here when we had all that space between the moving averages. All right, that can come at any 
particular time. And again, the game musical chairs just comes to mind. If you don't have a chair to sit in and you're over well leveraged and you don't have a lot of profits to book, it gets real painful when these extended moves decide to correct. So just focus on this level in here. I think this general space is gonna come into play at some point over the next few days. And um, we'll see how that goes. The same goes for the cues, just with its own same respective pattern. You know, this area in here is probably, there's a nice juicy gap in there to be filled. You know, this is gonna be an area of interest over the next couple of days. So if you just bought something, just be aware that you're gonna to have to have a little longer time frame than you probably would consider uh, things following through by tomorrow. I mean, if things continue to follow through tomorrow, then this market's trying to tell us something. Maybe it's maybe the election's already been decided by our crowdsource, which we call the stock market, which is generally six months ahead and it's a predictive mechanism. So maybe it's trying to tell us something there as well. I don't know, I just get a little nervous when I see this much space in between the price and the moving averages. Side note, the Russell 2000s had a really good two weeks. Those move, those uh, small cap stocks have tried their hardest to do stuff, uh, do some catch up, which is interesting because there have been a lot of small cap uh, energy names and uh, solar names and things that are kind of catching wind out there. <clears throat> Before I go, what is it? Neo is the trade of the week, which I will discuss tomorrow after my system unfreezes here. Uh, Dean, you can find the, uh, yeah, you can find it in our Trade Ideas um, podcast, or you can find it in the YouTube. Where can I find the recordings for Fridays? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I almost misread that. Jamie took care of you there. So look at this. Uh, this is a good looking chart, and this is after another day of data. You know, so the trade, uh, trade of the week was selected when the chart looked like that oh, going into the weekend, but now we've got a beautiful little dancing doji right in line, right above the moving average. And I'll tell you, you know, I've been doing this long enough, um, barring any collapse in the backdrop of the market or the odds don't favor us. This was a beautiful reversal candle down here. Nice push. And that's about as just as sweet as the flags get um, as they go. This is a very hot space right now as well. I don't base any of my trades on the story of the stock. Um, this is a motor vehicle body. It's basically called that, but it, it's an electric vehicle. You know, this is kind of a little, little baby Tesla here and they sell to the world markets. They don't really sell in the US, but they sell a lot in world markets. So in this case, our chart is confirming the story of the hype of it could be a baby Tesla, we'll see. But one caveat, and I'll talk about it tomorrow. When these fail, they will fail hard, just like I talked about before, as opposed to the ones that are, you know, down here in basing. And then we look to buy a breakout from there little different side here. So you've got to be on your toes if these fail, but all systems look pretty good there for um, tomorrow. We'll see what happens. And that's all I've got, Jamie. You're on red mute. Yeah, Steve, you dropped off right there in your last. Which part? Did I? Just at the very end, so I was waiting to see if you were going to come oh, no, back. I, no, I said, uh, oh, I said that's all I got. I think I probably put myself on mute. But oh, no worries, no worries. I was talking about Neo being a really nice looking flag there, isn't it? You know, that's just that's it's a good looking chart. Exactly, and it might be a baby Tesla, but its market cap is still 304 billion, right? So it's not exactly a small no company. market cap's 20 23 billion over here on Neo. Really. Oh, yeah, wait, wait, wait. I was like, man, that's big. But And then I just realized I didn't have it on the right symbol. <laughs> it's got a billion. One okay. I'm cash. like, wow, I had no idea that that market cap was that large. Yeah. Yes, 23 Great billion, store. which still yeah. is is nothing to sneeze at. Um, they're not making money yet, but their quarterly revenue is uh, exploding. So you can see that as well. For you Absolutely. Fundamental numbers junkies. Good stuff, Steve. I'm in it with you. So let me grab it here get rolling with the rest of the stuff. Oh, and by the way, just while you were talking about the SPY there, check this out. Okay, here we have the SPY on my moving averages, obviously. Um, but if we come up here and we hit the anchor and we anchor the big, the you know, just the eyeball in it, seeing the biggest gap over here, we click on the anchor and we anchor to, well, it auto anchored for some reason, but it appears to be right. Um, and notice where we bounced. Hey, you know what? I got a suggestion, not to pick on you, but launch a new chart, spawn a new chart with no other moving averages, and then that anchor just jumps out much snappier, don't you think? I would imagine so. 
not to put you on the spot, but I, I, no, I really no, no, can't no. see. I can't see where the anchor drew. That's the problem. So I got you. I tell you what. Let me just clean it up the rest of the way here. That's going to be a lot easier to see. <clears throat> okay. So coming back here. Okay. I was talking about this day right here, <clears throat> six eleven of this year. I don't know why those. I don't know why it redrew either. That's crazy. Why did it redraw the lines? Okay. I anyway, don't know. Don't no moving averages. We come down here and we just go boink. And notice. Ah, yeah, interesting. Yep. So they held the line. They basically held the line. Yeah. Yep. So just, that day. just realized that a minute ago. The okay, more do. I look at it too, the more interesting it becomes. Brian is definitely onto something over there. It's his perspective, the lens that he looks through at everything. Well, and I've been exposed to it for quite a while, but you know, when you have so much information in your head from a looking at these things since the early nineties. You know, when you're an old dude, it takes a while for things to sink in. And the more and more I start doing these anchor view offs, I'm like, you know what? I, I need to start paying more attention to this. It took a long enough to get me into uh, smart TV land, so but I'm happy I'm here. <laughs> oh, Steve, they're watching you. Okay. All right. So let's get on with it here. Um, thank you for that, Steve. Um, real quick here, I was, as I was stating earlier, I was a little caught off guard by the follow through today because when I looked at my compare count, uh, like I always do after the first 15 minutes, I saw a mediocre bullish count. Typically, you know, we don't see moves like this unless we're above 55%, even approaching 60. So I even put that on my on my tweet today. I'm like, eh, meh, you know, I don't, I don't expect any any big follow through today. And the interesting part about that is in the individual names, individual stocks, there wasn't a whole lot of follow through, but in the overall markets, there there were. Um, so. That's just an, an odd observation there. But when we look at the SPY, I'll click this back over to 15 minutes here, just to crunch it up a little bit. You know, after this first 15 minute candle here, I mean, we pretty much got up and boogie pretty well for this being the SPY or the overall. Um, talk about range breaks, which everybody likes, uh, everybody knows that I like to talk about those. I mean, I mean, look at the SPY in and of itself today. I mean, look at that little consolidation uh, going into about 45 minutes and then boom, it just lifted off. And volumes were decent, but check it out. We only finished it a little over one today. So low volume grind up, medium volume grind up, wasn't even really medium, but uh, kind of correlates with what you were saying earlier, Steve, about what might happen. Yeah, a little, a little extended. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if I can make my pin work here, give me my pointer back. Let's get on with it. Okay, so as I said, that was a little little strange, but hey, we'll take it. Um, Holly, okay, some of you may be noticing today that Holly was spitting out a lot more signals than normal. Uh, we did a little uh, enhancement on the back end uh, in the last part of last week because Holly had gotten kind of silent there. A lot of people were like, well, you know, what's up with Holly? And, you know, when we have gap ups, continuous gap ups, and the market is approaching highs again, it gets a little difficult for the, even a statistically weighted system to consistently kick out alpha in the form of uh, uh, statistical alpha. Um, but we loosened it up today or made some enhancements. I, I don't know what the exact term would be. I'd have to talk to the developers, but wow, we got 17 signals today. She sure was not shy. And as far as performance goes, eh, kind of lackluster. If we're looking over here at the 100 share totals, um, which is what the channel bar is based on, 88 from 1.0 on eight signals, $5.88 from 2.0 on four signals, and about 47 bucks uh, for NEO on five signals for that total of 17 signals. Nothing to write home about, down slightly, uh, plus any commissions that you would have incurred. So, uh, you know, you can see the blotter right here. Well, grab the right side there, push that down a little bit. Okay, now we can see all trades. And as you can see here, a little bit more red than green. If we're not operating in 100 shares per trade, uh, instead of I'm risking $100 per trade here and just letting the system uh, adequately uh, adjust my share size here. But whether we're on conservative down here, moderate or aggressive, it was a losing day for Holly, unless you were just doing 100 shares and sticking to your guns like what we see up here, which still would have been a, a small losing day. So end all be all, market going up, but AI struggling today. Uh, 
luckily it's the first day of the week she's got four more days to try to redeem herself and so typically what we like to do here is look for conservative spread and moderate spread which you know we're looking for a larger number over here in the moderate profit column uh, but as you can see here not a lot to talk about we got a small amount right here in the akba trade this one is really the only worth uh, only one worth mentioning today as far as extracting some of the spread between zero and 80 bucks. And keep in mind, all these values are based on risking $100. That's why you see the stop out values right at 100. Um, so as far as continuation or success for some of these trades for Holly today, um, not a whole lot. But let's take a look at Alec real quick here because it does fit another parameter too. I'd like to talk about typically three categories here moderate conservative spread, uh, some of the trades that made for good add-ons, tacking more shares on, and then trade arounds, which trade arounds were basically non-existent today because once things got down to their stop levels, stop levels did not act as pivots. They just kind of kept on cruising through there. Um, but Alec was, was a decent winning trade and it had an add-on potential right here. So if we take a look at the chart, we can see right here is where Holly called the original buy signal right here at ten dollars and twenty cents get a little immediate lift here yay everything is all hunky-dory before uh taking a little pull back which is where holly decided she wanted to exit the trade and the profit save mode wasn't exactly a profit save i guess she was in the money but by the time the trade was complete we were back down to flat here so right about here is where holly closed the trade out of course on a day like today hard stops i believe are essential a little too much back and forth for break even stops. So if we would have stuck to the hard stop today uh, and just decided to take a little bit more risk, we could have profited from that. Uh, as you can see, topping out up at these levels and even higher going into the close over here. Um, but original entry signal here, if we stay in it, what my eyes were drawn to is, okay, bottom was put in here if we do go, do go up here and break these tops that might be a good place to add and of course it was we got that big push um, so this area right here as it broke the tops of those candles would have been a great time to bolster the trade or add a little bit of shares to that trade so alec a decent example uh, of some spread between conservative and moderate profit and uh, additionally an add-on opportunity there What else do we have here? Oh yeah, the only other one, Huya didn't have any uh, spread between moderate and conservative, but it did present a little opportunity to add a few shares here. Uh, of course, Huya was a short, a little gap down, a little sideways action. Holly comes in, says, let's take a short right here at 23.42. Of course, if we're playing by the rules, we have to use this, you know, we have the herky-jerky opening five minute wick here. Put in the bottom right there, looks like right at 22.94. So eventually, this trade did break below the entry price, was working nicely, took a little pop back up before releasing back down. Of course, right here is where we have the break of the opening range. So this would have been a great add opportunity here uh, around the 22.97 before it bottomed out right about the 22.33 level. Um, and just like a lot of longs and a lot of shorts out there, Shorts were going up and retracing, as well as uh, the longs were going up and retracing, just like the shorts were. A little bit of opportunity to exit down here in these candles, but if you didn't take the cookies, boom, a retrace. Not quite back up to the entry level, but right back to the ad opportunity level. Um, so as far as Holly highlights to go, uh, ho Holly highlights go today. That's about it, you know. Nice little sea of red over here. If we check out these aggressive profit values over here, you can see well below my original stop areas, uh, nothing really improved. SKX improved a little bit, but we're talking about a $20 swing there from the stop level. So it's really nothing to write home about there. So just kind of a lackluster losing day for Holly. Uh, we'll see what tomorrow and the rest of the week has in store. All right, just checking out the questions before we switch gears and go on to the next topic there. All right, I see Steve dropping links there. And, you know, hey, Mike, you got to pull it up. If you're bringing it up, let me just take a quick peek at it. And it seems like I've heard that symbol before in WBO. 
definitely been around for, for quite a while, but man, not bad action from that thing today. Let's pop back into 15 minutes and see how it did. And there you go. Stock was definitely in play and look how riding that 10 period fast line like a glove. So yeah, hope you got a piece of that, Mike. All right, moving right along here. Got a couple of range breaks I'd like to share with you guys today, but they were few and far between. Um, there were a lot of good setups early on, but in many of these, the volume was not present. And when we're talking about, typically, you guys know when I'm talking about range breaks, I like to have volume accompanying them. So we did have a couple of good examples out of my favorite ticker here. Of course, this is for the long side. This one, if you're looking for consolidation plays that continue to the downside, <clears throat> good luck. They were few and far between. Um, this thing was acting more like a bottom fishing ticker uh, than anything else today. Um, doesn't surprise me there. But from this one right here, we did get a couple of good, nice, tight plays. And the first one came in the form very early on. So I'm going to have to go back to five minutes here in the form of JAKK, of course. We know that this one has had some interesting um, days as of late anyway. Um, but check out these op the opening, let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes is when this one came in. Now, you see the red line there. I didn't even have to draw the line because, well, that was the area of what could have been acting as short-term resistance. But as you can see here, it blew right through it and took a very nice run today. So. This being the entry signal right here as we break through that little level of uh, potential resistance. Signal didn't come here because the volume was not in play yet, but then we get it right here. Such a tight little range there, that looks good to me. So this is actually the entry signal going through the line, which is potential resistance. Did it act as resistance? No, sir, it did not. Got a little wick up, but in that next candle, it just blasted through. So in essence, you know, I had marked up this chart earlier, Steve, but uh, it seems like my writings have disappeared. Hmm. I'm sure I saved it. <laughs> I need to go into chat and get help. Um, so bottom line is this. This is your risk area right here, and look at the reward area. That's what we're always looking for here, all right? But of course, just like other things out there today, didn't stay up there for long, gave back a big portion of what you would have been up there. But as far as the percentage moves, move goes there from 419 up to around 592, almost six bucks, Jack was definitely one of the bigger movers of the day on the intraday timeframes. Then this one, of course, been in a lot of people's radars as of late, uh, WIMI, more of the same. Look at this beautiful little consolidation area uh, going for about the first hour, but I got no signal from it. Why? Well, look at the volume, pretty much non-existent here. Took a little run up, buyers and sellers became equal one more time, making for a second chance to get into this one with the volume accompanying it. Um, volume kicked in right here, got a nice little clean break here for the majority uh, of the move from approximately 6.43 up to about the 8.15, 8.18 or 8.17 level. So very good percentage move in this one as well. Risk area being down here, you can probably pack that risk area three, four times or more into the reward area, which is what we always look for. So just keep in mind, these patterns are out there each and every day, but it all comes back around to timing. Um, finding the proper timing on a trade, in my opinion, is a lot harder than finding the chart pattern itself. So it's all about timing. Uh, when you can find these guys and is the risk according, um, is the risk acceptable, I should say, and is the pattern similar to this? So once again, not exactly rocket science that we're doing here, but you're having to plot through many, many symbols to find the one where the timing is appropriate. And that's about it from the, uh, the range breaks today from the high volume ticker. We did have a few more stocks cycling through the all time high turbo up family, no resistance today. This window has come back to life. It has kind of fallen off for a while there, but as I scroll through here, you're gonna see hits from every different color scheme. Mainly these are coming through the green one. Uh, the green one is the larger cap, which in my opinion is very good. Um, and this guy right here, net, was one of the uh, very tight patterns that you can see right here. 
nice little run up and then this flagging action up here at the top for a good 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes. And then boom, off to the races, a little pullback. We reclaim the 10 period even on the five minute and then just push harder uh, through the rest of the day. So once again on this one, very tight risk area. This is what we look for. Of course, sometimes it's going to be longer, but you know, this little bull flaggy type pattern here, run up, clearly a buyer in charge. It's got to take a break, just can't get it all done immediately. Um, but a beautiful entry, low risk on a large cap stock. And as you can see here, a lot of other green ones popping through. But once again, it's all about the timing. All right. And out of all of these, net was the one that uh, fit the bill the most today. Let's see, PGR, I think. Now, this one would have been okay, a little too stretched out. Don't mind the bottoming wick there once we get back up to this level. Only problem is the volume was a little too spotty, so we didn't get it in a timely fashion here. Coming up here, once again, it sets up nicely again, but one volume spike and then it goes back to sleep here. So from the upside with no resistance, net coming through, not a bad little trade there. Okay, now let me just do a little time check here. All right, we got plenty of time to go through and talk about anchored VWAP. So what I did here is I constructed a rather generic top list, okay? So the top list doesn't have any filters attached to it. You can see there's no filters here. All I'm really concerned about is this information right here. And then I constructed a custom list, which I'm going to share with you guys, of some of the most recent IPOs, and I did 100 of them. Um, I'm also going to share with you guys the source that I use to harvest these symbols. It's a pretty cool little uh, website. I'm going to go ahead and drop that into the chat here. It is called IPO Scoop. So anything IPO related, including finding the latest IPOs, you can go find all kinds of symbols there. And that was the source that I used for the list. And if I pop back in here to configure, you're going to see I do have it pointed to only one list, last 100 IPOs. So before we get rolling here, what I'm going to do is going to pop into my symbol list. I'm going to go ahead and right click, select all, right click copy. And I'm going to go ahead and drop the list into the chat as well. And you guys know what to do with that. Okay. So you've got the source I use to get the symbols. You've got the symbol list that I've generated today. And I'm also going to go ahead and pop this in here so I don't have to scramble and do it at the last year. Oops. Save or share. There we go. And I'll just call this the IPO top list placeholder. Okay. All right. So now you guys have all the resources that you'll need. So now let's just kind of take a peek here and start going over some of these charts. Let me just expand this out a little bit since we're just going to be looking at the daily. All right. <clears throat> and so just like any other window or pattern that we're looking uh, for or hunting, they're not all going to look pretty. And so that's what we have to do here is just kind of go through and see what might appeal to us. And the good news is, see, if I compress the chart, this is the entire history for Fubo. And some of these are going to be 30, 40 days old. Some of them are going to be four days old. Um, but the bottom line is this. What you want to do to generate that anchored VWAP, hmm, well, I could go through and delete my moving averages, but we'll just try it like this for now. We click on the anchor, we get the little vertical arrow to present itself. We come down here and we anchor to the very first day, okay? Then the VWAP is drawn in the purple line here. Um, so very interesting. You can see the whole progression here. Spike up to that VWAP, rejection, come back up here, try it again, rejection, come back up here, try it one more time. Success for a short time. You still got a nice little run from 1077 up to the 1415 area and then comes back down here and it takes over again to the downside. So just keep this in mind, you know, um, if we were searching for Fubo, right, or if we stumbled on a Fubo and we saw it up here, we could have set a price alert for when it gets to uh, the VWAP 
of course we would have missed out on this big green bar but that's okay because from here to here is a very nice price move and once it re once it got above there we had a good two-day run maybe even three days to make a timely exit um, before it came back down all right so as far as this one goes right now you can see that that VWAP is just kind of bending over all right so this one really isn't anything that I would get all excited and create a, a price alert for so we're just going to keep going here all right one two three four we got a really young IPO here so do the same process click okay well we just kind of crashed through it today but keep in mind uh, this is a very young IPO and there's been so many times where I'll see a chart like this and I'll forget about it and then later on 20 days later I will have seen it go back up here maybe break these ranges right here and take off on a nice little tear and I'm like why didn't you monitor that one you're so lazy okay but the good news is if we set a price alert to come back to the VWAP here which is 465 466 470 whatever uh, just kind of hiding behind that bar there but we can get a good idea um, we don't have to wait for the breakout okay because you always leave you know when these things do break out that's always a great thing to play but if we can key off of the reclamation of the VWAP if that ever occurs um, that'd be a, a very good thing to get our attention maybe key off of the VWAP if it gets up here and breaks out later maybe that would be a good time to add to a position right so even though this one's way down here at four you never know where it's going to be four five ten days from now so I will go ahead and set a price alert for this one around the 465 area 465 if it rises too long AVWAP we'll just call it that well that didn't trigger did it already let me find my price alerts here bear with me one second okay no it did not so that one is working. I'm like, I thought I saw a green line there for a minute. I'm like, how could that trigger? It's way down here. But that's just my eyes playing tricks on me. Okay, moving right along here. LI, click the anchor. What do we got here? Very interesting. Look how anchored VWAP is just kind of acting as a, a level of support. 10 period is also there confirming, right? So this one actually looks pretty good, but uh, if we don't want to chase, you know we could keep an eye on it tomorrow see what it looks like on the open um, but if we don't want to chase we could easily set a pullback alert here okay either to the top or all the way down to the VWAP if I was going to do that first I'd probably set one right about here right about the well I lost my marker there right about the 1805 1806 level then if it triggers, maybe I'd wait for it to get down to the VWAP based on how it was operating intraday or how it looked intraday. But for right now, I'm going to say 1806. And this one would be a pullback alert. So if it pulls back, we want to go along a VWAP. Okay, we got that one. Uh, let me just check the question here. Can you explain the difference between way anchored VWAP yeah and you can do both Jim uh, the the whole thing about the anchored VWAP is so that you can set the volume weighted average price according to events that you think are monumental I guess for lack of a better description there like a big gap or a first day of trading okay so just keep in mind whatever you feel is a, an important level or an important gap you can set that average weighted uh, anchored VWAP there to give you a guideline there but that's the general gist of it Steve if you have anything to add by all means uh, chime in there okay EDTK let's do the thing anchor it opening day and this one is clearly well below the VWAP but once again it's a young issue so where we where'd we close today 343 might take a while but hey we're in no hurry here so if this guy gets up to 412 I'd like to know about it and keep in mind we're not setting these alerts to immediately pull them up and just go bye 
we have to pull it up, see how it's reacting. You know, maybe it takes four or five days to get back up there. Maybe it gets up here and consolidates right under the VWAP, right? But as long as we set a price alert, doesn't really matter what it does between now and then, we're gonna get the alert when it gets back up there to the VWAP. And also keep in mind, you don't have to set it right at the VWAP. You can set it right before the VWAP. So you have a little bit of lead time on it. Now this one, I don't know what the deal is with this one. I think it might've been a reverse split or something, but it's got history before. But even so, it doesn't matter because even though we can't see down there, I would anchor to this bar here or this candle. And there you have it. Um, what did it do today? Notice how we got up to that anchored VWAP and boom, rejection, okay? But it still looks worth monitoring, okay? Got up there today, couldn't close, right? But hey, what if we go sideways for a number of days, reclaim that VWAP? Once again, the key here about these is they're new issues or I don't know exactly what's going on with API, um, but the, uh, the theme, the song remains the same, so to speak. So we're gonna set an alert as of the high of today, which was 47.70. I think so, let me re-validate that. Yep, 47.70, so we'll go 47.72 or so. And this one would be a rise. Okay, and that one is working, all right. And we're just gonna continue the process here. Anchor, here. All right, this one's already kinda, well, no. Eyes are, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm going colorblind in my old age here. Um, but a try on Friday, right up to the VWAP, a close. Looks like it's kinda holding the line here. So for this one, once again, we have to try to imagine what's gonna happen over the course of the next four or five, more days. This wick is encouraging. Right back up to the anchored VWAP. Maybe it toes the line a little bit before it heads higher. So for this one, I think I'd use the high of today, which is 68.99. So we'll just say 69 bucks. Once again, if it rises. And by the way, I'll share these at the end if anybody would like to have them. NCNO, let's come up here and anchor that guy. All right, once again, check it out on Friday. We got the wick above the VWAP, uh, strong today, closing, what do we close out on this candle here? $80.40, so probably just a smidge below it but I'm still interested in this one. So we're gonna mark off the high today, 83. Long, if it rises to it, AV up. Oh, and one more note about the top list that I've constructed here. Um, I've set it up to sort by relative volume, just for obvious reasons here, but that doesn't mean that one, you know, one of these IPOs that's doing 0.5 or 0.3, as long as it's liquid and the spreads aren't too big, uh, that does not necessarily disqualify it from being a good swing trade candidate. Okay, Ebon, Ebang, what a name. And I'm guessing this is a Chinese company, right? And I do believe, I want to say this is a Bitcoin mining play. Yep, Bitcoin mining equipment. And this is one of the ones that I was describing earlier where I forgot to monitor it. When I was, I was made aware of it way back here, <clears throat> but I forgot about it and guess what? Would have been a good trade. Check out, check out how it reacts along that anchored VWAP. This keeping it down until we got the gap up, then Instead of the VWAP acting as the resistance level, then acts as the support. And, uh, you know, I think this one, I think the train's already left the station. We got the anchor VWAP way down here. So um, on this one, you know, I just have to say, 
if we get a little bleedy through these lines here, right? We might want to take an excursion back down to the VWAP, right? Um, so on this one, what I'm going to do is take the low of that candle right there, which is 880. And I'm just going to say, you know what? If this thing goes down to 879, I might think about shorting it. All right, we got that one set. ALVR, we got all the info up there. So we'll do the same thing here. And was on top of the VWAP for a little bit. If you were long, you were like, yeah, this thing's holding the line until, you know, what, Thursday of last week. We broke down here and uh, eh, just kind of a non-event, nothing really I'm going to mark up here. It's just looking like it's going to come down here and test these levels probably tomorrow. Ooh, this just doesn't look, well, if this is an IPO, it's just crazy as all get out. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're going to pass on that one. ACI. All right, taking a little stretch up today. Oh, the wick, it tried, it just couldn't, couldn't do it. Um, but it might be keep, worth keeping an eye on. I don't know. We're out of this little area right here, stretching on up. Yeah, we're going to pass on that one too. Okay, here's an interesting one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. Let's see what the VWAP tells us. Okay, definitely one I'd like to keep my eye on. We'll just set a price alert here for a good round 25 bucks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not even two weeks old yet. So who knows what this one's going to look like, you know, a month or two down the road. So once again, just kind of eyeballing this level right here. We'll set the price for 25 bucks even. If it's long, we want to go rises. Yep. Okay. Now we got that one as well. Okay, I'm going to do a couple of more here, um, but I think you guys get the gist here. It's it's a pretty easy process. It's just about generating the list, going going back and anchoring the first candle, and then picking out the ones that look good to you. Okay, all right. Nice little controlled action leading up to the VWAP. Looks like it might have closed just a pinch above it. So this one's this one's on my watch list now. Big C, high of the day. So we got 104.45. So we'll go. I think that was it. 105.47. We'll do it. Make it busted by a couple of pennies. Rises long. Anchored VWAP. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, I want to pick one with a little less day. So Unity Software. Okay, well above it. Not really a whole lot there. Let's go do Verks real quick. Hmm, interesting. Held the line here. Kind of wanting to break out to this little level here. So this one's interesting. We're going to go ahead and mark up Verks as well. That's going to be 26.37. Okay, that one triggered. Is that from Post Market? Let's see here. Well, I guess I'd have to look at my intraday chart, right? Yeah, okay. That one triggered a post market. Uh, so we're going to delete that one. Well, I thought I was. There we go. 
Okay, so now we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We got nine. I tell you what, I think we should just round it up to an evil ten, uh, an even, not an evil ten, an even ten. Um, hmm, RKT, Steve. We're familiar with that one. And we'll anchor it. And there we go. Just consolidating right underneath that VWAP level. What is the VWAP level? That's about 2421. So we'll go ahead and mark this one up. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate the cloud link and I'll go ahead and drop these in. All right, so that last link is for these price alerts. So hopefully, um, once again, the process is simple. Just anchor to that first day, check out the levels, pick out what's interesting to you, set that price alert, and uh, we'll see how it goes from there. We'll revisit these come eh, probably next Monday and see how they did. All right, Steve, anything to add before I kick it back over to Scott? There if we go. Not, all uh, no, all cut up here. All right, very good. So Scott, if you're ready to walk us on out, I think we're all ready. All right. Hopefully, I found the mute button that time. So a couple items on the way out before we turn you loose. Uh, we've got an ebook. It's all about earnings season. It helps you, uh, gives you a couple strategies to employ. So go ahead and grab that. Just go to trade-ideas.com slash earnings. Grab that free download. Uh, we've also got a podcast and we released a new episode last week. So go ahead and check that out. Just search for Trade Ideas Podcast wherever you listen to your pods. Add us as a subscription. Grab the last couple of releases. There's some good interviews in there for you. Uh, you can use the code Fall Savings to save 15% off the first month or year of any subscription or upgrade from standard to premium. So make sure you take advantage of that. If you decide you want to either do an upgrade or start being a subscriber today. And uh, you can follow Jamie on Twitter at QuantBot. You can follow Steve at Today Trader. Uh, Trade Ideas Pro is our Facebook handle that you can follow and share everything we post with all your buddies. And uh, info at trade-ideas.com is the best place to send any questions at all. It goes into our help desk software and gets you the answers you need. Um, thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, everyone. Yep. yep. Thanks, everybody, for popping in. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Steve. We'll see you guys tomorrow.